Hi everybody, I'm Bethany Duval. Welcome to my art studio and my writing space and my very first video blog. I had originally planned to talk about my story, That Which Was Fine and Free, which has just been published by Carpathia Publishing in an anthology called Legends Reborn. Um, but I have figured that as our world is going through such seismic change, um, I need to change my focus on this video blog too. So I was going to be talking about some of my research. I was going to be talking about some of the historical events that happened in the story. And, um, and now I'm finding that so many of those, those things are tying to what's going on now. Um, we are in a global crisis. We're in a global pandemic. We are over the course of the last couple of, of weeks for some of us, months for others, the way that we live our lives has changed entirely. And while the current experience is temporary, we don't know how long it will last. And we don't know what its long-term changes are going to be as we move forward um, past this pandemic. And I feel like this is, this is a bit more important of a topic than than my story in particular. So, and yet at the same time, it relates to a lot of the things that I was exploring in that story. Um, the story begins with a woman sighting a mermaid and shortly after a, a famine ensues and then ancestral lands get sold to somebody who wants everyone to start using them for profit. And, uh, the whole societal structure, the whole authoritative structure, the whole food supply, everything that the characters in the story find familiar and are used to gets upended. And collectively, they deal with increasing uncertainty and increasing fear. And right now, collectively in our world, we're dealing with uncertainty. We're dealing with quite a bit of fear. And I think that having just spent a good bit of time exploring this idea of fear, now I'm watching a lot of it work out in the world and I'm seeing blame and I'm seeing in other places how we're lifting each other up and helping each other through and in other places how we're grieving for each other and in other places how we're afraid to change the way that we do things because somehow that makes us weak there are so many different ways that we respond to fear and uh, i'm not a counselor i'm not a psychiatrist i i have no authority in the area of mental health um, I have been fortunate to work alongside several counselors, but as an artist. Um, so I've, I've helped people through creative storytelling um, as opposed to being someone who's qualified to give mental health advice. So this is not me giving you any sort of professional mental health advice, but I did want to share a little bit of my experience with fear because the characters in my story, um, you know, all of them, fictitious or based on real, real people in history, all of them are real in the sense that they represent some of the ways that, that we experience and deal with fear. And in my life, what I have found is that the most effective way to deal with fear is to look at it and be honest with myself about it. I think that one of the things that scares us most is that we don't know what to expect. We don't know what will happen. And so we build these big scenarios in our heads that, that are the worst thing that we can imagine. And we terrify ourselves. And what I have found in my limited and small experience is that when I sit down and I look at the thing that terrifies me and I say, okay, if this happens, what will I do? It gives me a chance to pause. 
it gives me a chance to breathe. It gives me a chance to figure out how to make the very worst thing that could happen the best possible version of that worst thing. And then when I've done that, I'm able to make better decisions. I'm able to live in the life that I'm in without completely constantly thinking about this thing that may or may not ever happen because I've put some things in place in my mind and sometimes in my life to make sure that if those if that does come to pass, I've I've gotten as ready as I'm capable of. And an example of this, the first time that we really as a family used this strategy, about five years ago, uh, my husband lost a little bit of vision in one eye. And his doctor told us that there was a possibility that he may become 100% blind and that he might not. And together, our biggest fear was that he would lose all of his eyesight and that would impact our income. It would impact our health insurance. It would impact um, you know, the way that we divide household chores. It would impact the way that his daily life happens and the way that my daily life happens. It would impact my daughter and how much um, activity she would be able to do. So it would have a lot of different impacts and all of them were scary. All of them were unknown. We had no timeline. We didn't even know if it would really happen. And so I knew that if I didn't sit down and come up with a plan for if it did happen, that I would just worry. Every single day I would worry and I would try with all my energy to make it not happen and then I wouldn't be living the things that were good. I wouldn't be enjoying the things that were still okay, that were still intact because I'd be so busy trying to control the future. And so I sat down and I thought, okay, I need a plan. I need to know at what point will I make changes? When will I change from being a self-employed full-time writer to going and getting employment with health insurance just in case my husband needs to step back from employment as he was the one providing health insurance at the time? At what point will we seek out resources um, for visual impairments and technologies and things like that? And so I just thought, okay, the biggest things, the biggest things that were going to affect our lives, what can I do or what can I have in place so that I don't have to make decisions if the big scary thing happens, so that I've already got decisions made and I can be in that moment. And so I made that plan and I sat down with my husband and I shared that plan with him and he added some things and negotiated some things and together we had a plan for the very scariest worst thing that we could think of. And the day that my husband woke up with no eyesight, we sat together and we were able to be present with each other. We were able to go out to breakfast together. I read him the menu. We appreciated being near each other. We weren't excited that he'd lost his eyesight. We weren't happy about it, but we were able to have the space to grieve because we also didn't have to fix everything because we already knew what we were doing. We already had a plan. Sometimes the things that we think are the very worst do happen, and when they do, if we've looked at them and said, okay, if this happens, here are the things that I can do to make it the best possible version of this worst case scenario. And then we set it aside. Sometimes those worst things don't happen. Sometimes they don't. There have been countless other things, health related, money related, parenting related, where there was the possibility of a worst case scenario. So I sat down and I made a plan so that I could keep living and enjoying myself while waiting to see if that thing happened. And lots of them didn't happen. Some of them did. And when they did, we were able to stay calm and we were able to deal with them.
what we have on our hands now is is very it's it's bigger than any of us and a lot of us uh you know if if you have if you are a faith-based person i'm sure that that's giving you some comfort um and if you're not a faith-based person then there are lots of other actions that can give you comfort um but either way you know in saying this i'm not saying don't rely on your faith or do rely on your faith what i'm saying is that we can be prepared to we can take steps to we can if you are a praying person you can absolutely pray for protection for wisdom for all the things that you would pray for but you can also participate tangibly in the prayer by readying yourself and by looking at the thing that scares you looking at what scares you doesn't make you less faithful looking at what scares you makes you honest if you don't have a faith looking at what scares you gives you an opportunity to build the tangibles that you do have at your disposal it's something that doesn't replace faith and it also doesn't require you to have a faith it just gives you an opportunity to participate in being honest in knowing yourself and in finding a way to be calm so that as things do progress whether they progress in a way that your family is safe from the things that you are afraid of or whether they progress in a way that some of those things do affect your family if you have looked at it and you have made yourself ready you can be in it and you can be the best version of yourself in it and you can be the best for the people that you love in it and we can't control much but we can control what versions of ourselves we are i wish you peace i wish you good health i wish you speedy recovery health wise economically and in every other way i wish you all the good that a life can have